This is a very important topic for your exam as well as for clinical practice. What is glycated hemoglobin? This is the product of non enzymatic addition of carbohydrate to amino acid side chains of hemoglobin. So, this is your hemoglobin. It is made up of heme and four globin side chains. If you add carbohydrates, without the help of any enzymes that is called glycation so that is why this is glycated hemoglobin there are certain books which mention glycated hemoglobin as glycosylated hemoglobin which is utterly wrong what is the difference between glycation and glycosylation glycosylation is enzymatic and the addition is always covalent okay whereas glycation is always non enzymatic remember sometimes you might have heard a term called hba1c instead of glycated hemoglobin what is hba1c it is nothing but a type of glycated hemoglobin so we have learned that glycated hemoglobin means hemoglobin to which carbohydrate is non enzymatically attached based on which carbohydrate is attached we have many types of glycated hemoglobin out of that hba1c is the most abundant glycated hemoglobin so that is why we use hba1c and the glycated hemoglobin interchangeably okay this is based on the chromatographic mobility so the adult hemoglobin that is hba is made up of alpha 2 and beta 2 right so once you do chromatography of hba you get the fast moving fraction that is hba1 so that is why we use HbA1c, this is the HbA1c fraction. Here it is glucose which is non enzymatically attached. So, in diabetes mellitus, the blood glucose level is very high. So, HbA1c means glucose is non enzymatically attached to N terminal valine and epsilon amino group of beta chain of adult hemoglobin. So, we know that HbA1 that is adult hemoglobin is made up of alpha 2, beta 2. Glycation involves mostly the beta chain in HbA1c. Because this is a non enzymatic process, this HbA1c level is directly proportional to the concentration of blood glucose. If the blood glucose is very high, HbA1c level also will be very high. So, in patients of uncontrolled diabetes mellitus hba1c level will be very high right so we can use hba1c as a long term indicator of blood glucose level in patients of diabetes mellitus as you can see that this hba1c will say the average blood glucose concentration over a period of 12 weeks the lifespan of RBC is 120 days. 120 days is how many months? 4 months. So, 4 months means how many weeks? 16 weeks. Why are we not using 16 weeks? Why only 12 weeks? Because the RBCs can be old RBCs, there can be new RBCs, right? So, the lifespan of RBCs will be different. So, that is why we take average of 12 weeks that is 3 months okay so hba1c will tell about the blood glucose level over a period of 3 months how to calculate that the estimated average glucose over a period of 3 months in a person this is the formula okay no need to memorize the formula whenever you see the hba1c result they will also give this eag in the result also in the clinical laboratory hplc using cation exchange column 
is the most common technique used for the deduction of HPA1C. You know that HPLC is used for the deductions of hemoglobin variant like thalassemia, etc. Right. So the same HPLC is used for deduction of HBA1C also. As we have already seen in patients of uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, the HBA1C level will be very high. So that is why HBA1C more than or equal to 6.5 percentage. What is this percentage? That means HBA1C among the total hemoglobin. So in the total hemoglobin, that is HBA, adult hemoglobin, right? So among the total adult hemoglobin, how much is HBA1C? If it is more than 6.5 percentage, we can diagnose diabetes mellitus. In patients who are already suffering from diabetes mellitus, they should control their HbA1c level less than 7 percentage. There are certain conditions in which HbA1c cannot be used. Can you guess HbA1c is the percentage of glycated hemoglobin, right? So, whenever the level of hemoglobin is altered, as in the case of hemoglobinopathies, as in the case of severe anemia, you cannot use HbA1c. What are the other alternatives? There is an alternative called fructosamine. Fructosamine is glycated albumin, but this will not tell you about the long term glycemic control, this will tell you about the short term glycemic control only. We will discuss about fructosamine in a separate video. So, this is all about HbA1c. For advanced learners, let me tell you more about this. Let us discuss the formation of HbA1c in detail. The amino group of beta chain N terminal valine and epsilon amino group of internal lysine residues will bind to the aldehyde group of glucose to form a shift base. As you can see by this arrow, this is a reversible reaction. Okay. If this shift base persists for a certain period of time, it undergoes irreversible reaction to produce a ketoamine. Okay. So, amino group and aldehyde group, they react to form aldemine that is your shift base which undergoes a process called amadori rearrangement which is irreversible to produce ketoamine. The formation of shift base that is aldemine is fast reaction whereas the formation of ketoamine that is the irreversible product is a very slow reaction okay and remember this shift base is also known as pre HbA1c and this is a labile component. Understanding the pre HbA1c is very important because this shift base formation can be reversed based on the lifestyle modifications. Okay. So, if you have any doubt, you can always ask in the comment section. Please share this video with your friends. Thank you.